there is no Nintendo news. Okay, there is some Nintendo news, but there's not really a lot. Nintendo has announced a date for their next Nintendo Direct. It's ages away. Cadence of Hyrule may be releasing this month. Maybe. Devil May Cry is coming to the Switch, so I know absolutely nothing about the series. Four new Pokemon Amiibo were available for pre-order in the UK, and the PlayStation State of Play just aired, and it's... Alright, it's got two major ones that stand out, and I just don't know all that much about them. And I've been enjoying making two videos a week, but... Man, it is a struggle to create content right now. There is just so much of a Nintendo drought. They seem to be waiting for an E3 blowout kind of deal. And with the announcement of the Nintendo Direct, it might mean that we're not actually getting one until that date that gets announced. The most we'll get are new releases and that beta for Mario Kart Tour. So I'm sat here, struggling to write an idea for this video, there's nothing new, there's nothing I haven't already covered to some capacity, and nothing else that's within my reach or abilities to do. So how's about something a little bit out of my abilities? We're talking about Animal Crossing 2019. Why is this out of my abilities? Well, I'm not, I'm not really an Animal Crossing fan. I mean, I am. I just don't really know much. It's like the opposite of the Persona games. To give you some background info of my history with Animal Crossing, I was first introduced to it by seeing that KK Slider trophy in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Well, for some people, it sparked a sense of mystery and wonder of what this new guy could possibly be indicating for a new series. For me, it went completely over my head and I was completely uninterested. I never had a Nintendo 64, so naturally I wouldn't play the original game. I did have a GameCube, however, but again, Animal Crossing just flew completely over my head. City Folk, or Let's Go to the City, as it's known in the PAL regions, did, however, garner my attention. And I did play it. I did enjoy it. But not for a crazy long amount of time. I got some fair grips, I did a fair bit of grinding, I enjoyed working at the museum, but it did feel just like grinding. And the slow pace and punishments for time travelling just made me quit. And I mean... I was only like 11 at the time, but still... Eh. So fast forward a little bit and I now understand more of the popularity behind it. I've now been properly introduced to the internet and my whole way of thinking has completely changed. So naturally, I dived into Animal Crossing New Leaf, but way later than its original release. I did play it and I did enjoy it and in fact I did even better than before. But after a while I found it boring and tedious. It didn't fit with my lifestyle of just playing it little by little. I liked it, but I never fully experienced everything, you know? I didn't unlock everything. I didn't unlock a lot in general. I skipped Happy Home Designer because it was a spin-off I wasn't really interested in, and the Amiibo Festival I forever wished I'd never have to see again beyond the trailer. And then my wish was denied last Christmas. Thanks, Alex. When Animal Crossing came to mobile devices in the form of Pocket Camp, I jumped on that one too hoping it would be the next Pokemon Go, but I played about a week of it and then, like most, I just kind of dropped it from there. Now, I love the concept of the games, but I struggle with the longevity of them. I am kind of a fan, but much less knowledgeable on it. I don't know most of the characters, I never looked into the personalities and other hidden details, and never unlocked everything in a single game. I've probably played about 10 to 20 hours total on the whole franchise. Want to define me as a fan or a fake fan or whatever? Do as you want. I'll accept it more gracefully than Persona. I'm sorry I don't own a PS4. Just because I don't own the games doesn't mean I can't be a fan. I know so much about the games. They just don't have a PS4 or the consoles they're on. God. Right, wine over. But regardless, since there is literally nothing else to talk about, we're going to be talking about potential changes and possible updates I, as a less informed fan of the franchise, would like to see, or we just could see in Animal Crossing 2019. It might be preferences, it might be constructive criticism, it might just be predictions, we'll see as I go along. So let's start with the animal villagers. There's already 333 according to the wiki, I want more. I want new species. There's already, I think, 143 species or something like that. But you know what they haven't got? They haven't got a cheetah, they haven't got a possum, they haven't got a boar, and they haven't got a snail. 
On top of that, I could see some more rarer animals coming in. For example, to extend the lizard type, maybe we could get a dragon, like a Komodo dragon or something of that sort. For maybe more aquatic animals, although there is the kind of overlapping with the fishing element, maybe we could get some kind of starfish special character or a crab, a lobster, an actual fish that's wearing a fishbowl? I don't know. Or another one, the Loch Ness Monster. I'll talk about him a little more later because I've got a whole genre for him. Another type of animal we really haven't seen and I guess really they're not animals, they're insects and it's not called insect crossing, but what if we got some insects? What if we had a centipede guy, a rhinoceros beetle, an ant or a fly? It might again get into weird territory with the bug collecting, but I think it's cartoony enough that people can kind of overlook it. But now we come back to the Loch Ness Monster, because I'm thinking it would be interesting if we saw new animals, at least rare ones, maybe as special guests, in the form of monsters and myths. This could be your classical dragons, your Loch Ness Monster, your Bigfoot, your Yeti. You could have a Kraken or at least some kind of octopusy guy. You can get aliens, which I have seen actually thrown around as a suggestion in the past. Maybe a spider, I'm less convinced on that one, but they're kind of monsters, uh, if they're big. Uh, we've already seen a ghost villager, but maybe we could see more ghosts or something more grounded as a genre almost. We could get even weirder with maybe a griffin or a sphinx. We already own a unicorn after all, maybe we could get a pegasus, just a horse with extra wings on them. Or some kind of fairy, though that might be a bit too human. Another idea that I did have that we'll also go into more later later is a centaur. Obviously, they're half human, half horse, so maybe it could be a really updated costume that the player villager could wear to give them two extra legs on the back. Even if it doesn't animate, it would be interesting to see that kind of design on an Animal Crossing character. Other things we could see are proper cameos. We could get an inkling villager, a bulborb, a goomba, or a bokoblin. Or if there's some special octopus day, we could get all sorts of ones with the octolings from Splatoon, the octorocks from Zelda, the bloopers from Mario, and the waddlepus from Pikmin. Downfall all of these will come in, and there's a good chance the inkling has already appeared in like a caravan or something, but it's an idea. And hey, that's what this video is supposed to be all about anyway. So let's go on to the actual characters now. I would say we need more in-depth characters, more interactivity, and maybe even more dedicated social events. Kind of like birthday parties, but more. Similar to the Tomodachi Life approach, or even... Uh, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Perhaps you can do this to learn more about them, their aspirations, their thoughts on the town. We might not need necessarily more types of personalities, because I think there's only like eight anyway, but we could perhaps extend them, affecting more elements in the game, and make them accessible to read somewhere in-game. Because I don't like relying on the wiki all that much. Perhaps give characters more influence on their environment, planting more of their favourite flowers around, having a dedicated flag design that they set up in their house. They could have favourite items if they don't already. It would be special items specifically for them, fitting with their personalities. Maybe they have a favourite emotion, a favourite collectible, or a favourite social event. We already have favourite coffee, so maybe it can extend further. Maybe there's even favourite villagers that the other animals might have, which can change per the village arrangement, or be dedicated partnerships across all of the Animal Crossing villagers that you can have visit for special events. These dedicated partners could be based on species, their aspirations, or some kind of style that they have. It would make for a more in-depth neighbour anyway. Next up, let's talk about houses. This idea has already been pitched, but the Happy Home Designer's approach to having yards in front of them definitely should return. We need more Happy Home Designer stuff. Maybe we can have more elements of helping decorate others' houses. Or have a second job as a designer, much like the coffee shop job. Going around others' houses, going around other establishments, maybe even the mayor's office or the museum layout or something a bit more open like that. We also need more storage for items. I don't like getting rid of everything. I want to actually collect everything. Probably couldn't hold all the furniture into a vault, but maybe there's a catalogue of what's being gathered. Though there's always a chance that might already exist, I don't really know. But I do like the idea of the vault, the more that I think about it. Like it's a secret growing base of stuff you can collect, like a super museum hidden underneath the city or something. Anyway, going back to the general house idea, we need more variety, more room shapings perhaps. Maybe we can choose corridors and entrances, different ceilings, or maybe like one of those with the angled roofs, like if you've just renovated an attic. We need non-square shapes, a 
like maybe we can choose the length with the rectangles. We can take down walls or at the very least have less loading zones per room. We could decide our stair location and the different styles, maybe even getting a spiral staircase or something. And what I would really like to see, though it's not quite fitting with the style, but hey, it's HD, so you never know. I want dynamic lighting. I want the window having its light angled depending on the time of day and going orange over the sunset period. Something like that to really get the sense of time passing even when you're in the house. But the main big thing I want to see from Animal Crossing 2019, whether we see it or not, we'll just have to see, but I want new areas. We've already established something like a camping area from the mobile games, but maybe we can have more of that or it's different locations you can just visit. Things we can see is maybe an amusement park. Maybe you can find it when it's first starting its business and you can choose to put your funds into the amusement park as they add more attractions. These could then also double as a social event later on when you've finally built it all up, like an extra network that you can go with for your villagers if they're in the mood. We could get a beach area, much like the mobile game, just being a little side area you can go to. A city area, if we were to take elements from let's go to the city. Maybe it could be even that you decide what shops go where. And again, could even be a hub world that you fund. Similar to the city area, maybe we'll get a marketplace or a bazaar, where it's much more of a closed downtown kind of region. I'll go into more details of what we could do with these areas a little bit later on, but let me just list some out for you. We could also get a water park or a swimming pool kind of area to hang out in. A library? I don't think that exists yet. You can just get a different sections of bookshelves. But a dedicated library could be a fun new alternative to a museum. We could, if we, Animal Crossing wanted to go a little bit dark, have a graveyard, perhaps to seeing certain ghosts and darker kind of personality traited animals. We could see a cinema, a theatre, similar to the club LOL thing, arcades, a dojo, a train station, I mean there already is a train station but maybe you can extend a bit further. Maybe there could even be a cave you can go to or a mountain you can hike up, a racetrack that you can witness or a gym and a boxing ring. Obviously you don't actually have to beat the guys up but it could always be a reference to Smash I guess. Some kind of spiritual place for meditation if you're that type of person. A circus to see if you'd like a little bit of entertainment. An ice rink to enjoy the ice during winter or through the year if you really want it built like that. A hot air balloon ride you can go on. The top of a tower as a nice extra just mini location you can find out about your favourite villagers. As well as maybe all sorts of different transportation. If there is all these different areas, maybe they each have different modes of transportation. One could be a cruise, one could be a speedboat, one could be a bike path and one could be a bus. And they can all be headed up by the same guy, you know, that guy. He's not Tortimer, he's... Cap'n! Cap'n, that's his name, I knew that from a Smash song. Right, now let's talk items. The most likely thing we'll see is new IP stuff. We're gonna see Cappy from Super Mario Odyssey, Power Move as well, wedding cosplay for Mario and Bowser, and a Pauline outfit. We'll see spirit orbs and champions tunic and ancient weaponry, and a guardian statue for Breath of the Wild coverage. We'll get some Octoling goggles from Splatoon 2, and I really hope we get Waluigi's hair from Mario Tennis Aces. We could also maybe get some character special items, like dedicated shirt designs per villager, or a favourite item collectible from each villager. Kind of like the portraits for each villager in Animal Crossing New Leaf. Or maybe we can even change them to figurines so they're a bit more interesting. That's an idea. We could also potentially get some new collectibles. We already have obviously fossils, bugs, fish and ores, but what if we could grow our own vegetables, have our own sort of dedicated plant life? Maybe we can collect books or cooking recipes if we have a cooking element added. Maybe we can get metal and scrap which we could dedicate to the amusement park. Or beans. I don't know why you want them. Coffee beans I guess. Which I think is a thing you already get paid in. Whatever. Another new item that's quite common that I expect we'll see coming into fruition is a camera. You can take photographs. It could be like the typical screenshots you can usually do. And if it's on the Switch, there's even a screenshot button. It could even be for dedicated selfies. Not necessarily a point of view thing that you control, but it could happen at the end of every social event, like posed picture. Maybe the personality affects how they pose in each location. And these selfies could be another collectible, collecting every location pose or every villager. And it could even be something you hang up in your house. Maybe you hang it up on the wall or just put it on your shelf. Or it could be part of a larger framed collection you can put up. If there's credits, it could even go there too. 
It'll be like a nice little piece of evidence of a special memory as you go through the game, so that nothing ever gets forgotten, even your old villagers and your old fun times with them. Alternatively, maybe you can make prepared photos with your items, kind of like you do in Smash, like a mini museum type thing. Maybe you can scope around the items you have and place them for a certain picture. It's an idea. Okay, costumes. I haven't got too many ideas, but I've got a handful, I guess. For a start, is there no animal costumes already? Like, I've seen Pikmin and cameo stuff, but do we not have, like, a cat onesie or a frog headgear or that centaur idea? Can we not be an octopus with extra limbs or changing slight designs of the human villager more with that centaur idea? Hmm, seems like a missed opportunity. Although maybe it's like a... Don't want to be offensive or something, I don't know. Another thing is we could get maybe an extra accessory in the form of a backpack. This could either be for fashion, although I do believe it does appear as a fashionable item with different designs and references, but perhaps it could extend your pocket or have extra functionality. Perhaps it could show off a tent when holding it or when you're at a campsite. It can visually hold snacks in an amusement park. It could hold popcorn in the cinema, a surfboard at the beach, a foldable bike on the pathway, boxing gloves near the gym, and a foldable beach chair again on the beach if you wanted. Perhaps only certain items are usable to display visually through the backpack, but it's an interesting idea. Okay, let's talk emotes. We already have emotions, but emotes have become vastly more popular in games these days, so I'm thinking they're going to extend that too. For a start, we need more emotions. I want love, I want tired, I want awkward, success, disappointment, pride and disgust, or smelly, whatever you want to call it. Give us dances as well. We've already got the shrunk funk shuffle, but perhaps maybe these can combine with your emotions, maybe acting as an extensive upgrade for each of them. The success emotion can extend into sidestepping while holding up a hand, like you're doing it with the bugs, while holding up your hand. Smelly can become the classic diving dance with your hands swabbling in front of you, and the tired emotion could turn into slowly head bopping or something. As for things to do, you can already be a cafe worker in the past, but for some alternate jobs, maybe you could again be a house decorator for those happy home designer ideas, you could be a city funder. You can save up so that the city can expand, choosing what goes where. There could be visitable campsites. You could build that amusement park with collected metals and scrap. You can ride rides and choose the layout. Maybe for beach social events, you could have all sorts of different scenarios with different villages. You could be building a sandcastle, surfing, collecting seashells, sunbathing, hunting crabs, helping baby turtles, or building sand sculptures. Perhaps even the personality type of the villager you're with directly controls what you end up doing. You could be supporting the marketplace slash the bazaar. Like a downtown city center, it could have available foods and plants for harvesting. Maybe you help a single individual who's just setting up a new booth and trying to fit in. This could also be where you find Fortune Teller Katrina and Red and those kind of characters. You could be building up the library with collectible books headed by a bookworm or something. If there's no insects, I'm gonna be very disappointed. Come on, bookworm, library, it just lines up too well. A friend of mine suggested maybe a zoo area? I don't really think that's a good idea, but yeah, whatever. But how's about a consensual circus? What if there is a group of entertainers that you can see visiting your network? There could be a lion, an elephant, and a monkey. It could be a social event viewing, or maybe even make you a small scale employee there. Perhaps you can help entertainers backstage. You could sell popcorn in the stands, advertise outside the venue, or make the food in the kitchen. It's an idea to make you feel part of their little world. With the cave area, you can do multiple things on certain social events. Perhaps you want to explore deeper with a more adventurous villager. Maybe you'll be there finding bugs or hunting ores, or maybe you'll just want to hang out there like a little hideout spot. I was also suggested the idea of a farm area. Perhaps it could be specifically for harvesting plants and food, not animals. This could again maybe connect to the marketplace, where you assist in farming for that one person you're after. And most importantly, with all of these jobs, I damn well hope that you can get paid for all of them in relevant items. Sometimes we need more bells, so I want some of these jobs paying with actual bells. Sometimes it could be beans, like they do for the cafe already. Maybe sometimes you'll get seeds. And other times maybe you'll get recipes when you're working in the kitchen workplace. Something like that where it feels like the more you do it, the more you can expand in that particular area, in however you want to do it. And then there is the online functionality. 
Obviously, Nintendo has the Nintendo Switch Online service, and they're probably going to want to push onto it. I'm thinking with additional areas to visit, it could be like a giant connected network. Alongside visiting other people's villages, you can visit other people's amusement parks or other customised areas. You can find other villagers on the network. I can also imagine connectivity with Animal Crossing Pocket Camp to transfer your camp over to your saved game if you want to. There could also be online minigame high schools, like in that arcade area. And maybe as a bit of a stretch, you could get an actual online hub area where you see other villagers walking around, like at the arcade or at a city festival. Perhaps the only way you can interact is with those emotes and those dances. It's an idea. But after all of that, that is about all I have to say. That is a lot of suggestions, and if everything was in this, then this would be a gigantically massive game. I'm doubting something this large scale is to be expected, but hey, I was very much throwing everything at the wall, trying to see how they could possibly expand the games. Areas at most could just be a background location for a small, non-moving scene, though small-scale accessories and costumes and collectibles could be more of a reality. Anyway, as our final thing, let's finally fix that title screen, because Animal Crossing 2019? That's not very good. Animal Crossing Switch? That sounds pretty redundant to me. How's about these few? Animal Crossing Full Bloom, if we're going for that plant approach. Animal Crossing Network. Animal Crossing Small Beginnings, if you're trying to help out all the little people. Animal Crossing Big World. I don't know. Or even just simply enough, Animal Crossing Let's Hang Out. If it's the most social game ever in the Animal Crossing series, maybe that's the one that lines up. Clearly, I'm not the best at titles, but hey, a million speculative ideas? I can do that, apparently. As I said though, I'm not a knowledgeable fan, and some of these may already be incorporated. My apologies if that is the case. I will learn the most from this game because I'm more dedicated to get on with getting through this game a lot more longer than I have done in the past. But do tell me your thoughts too. What do you expect? And how would you like to fine tune my ideas? And when I'm inevitably wrong about all of this, feel free to come back and make me feel bad about it. I'll be keeping an eye on the comments anyway to see if anyone can genuinely come up with something that actually happens. Hopefully there will be some new news soon, because the more we have to wait, the more games I'll be forced to talk about without knowing much about, and the more fans will only end up getting infuriated about it. And I think I've had my feel. I am a Persona fan, okay? But for now, I think I'll be ending it off here. You know the drill, I'll see you on Monday. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. And thank you for dealing with my voice, it's been slightly busted, because I just came back from a 90 minute long show. Oh god, I'm tired. This video comes out tomorrow. Oh boy.